Here at Revision Marketing Group, our team of young professionals get it. Created with youth in mind, we strive to educate, inspire, and promote authentic creativity across all job fields. This is Young Creators. Hey guys, welcome back to the Young Creators Podcast. Today you have Christian and Michaela from the Revision team, and then we actually have two very special guests today. Do y'all want to introduce yourselves? Nope. Okay, that's Mark Pugh, guys. (laughs) And I'm Scooby, Jeremy Scooby Houston. Okay, thank you guys for joining us on the podcast. Thank you for having us. No problem. Of thank course. Thank you for having us here. Of course, absolutely. You feel so welcome. Are you sure? So welcome. <laughs> 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 it's a great start, yeah. Okay, Famous guys, um, you want to go by Scooby, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Scooby, Scooby, Scoob. Scooby and Mark are both uh, stand-up comedians. Do you like that term? Stand-up yeah, comedians? That term. Okay. That's what They're I both stand-up comedians. Um in the sh- like Shreveport area, so they're local to this area. Uh, we mm-hmm. thought it would be like a great idea to ask the ask the both of them to come on and just like chat or talk or joke with us briefly. So we're about to get into it. They're definitely doing a lot of joking. Oh yeah, <laughs> like the first twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, we're just rolling now, but okay. that's okay. Okay, so who is Scooby? We'll start with you. Uh, Scooby is. Is I guess you could say not an alter ego. We're the one and the same. But as a child, I was very quiet. And then when I got a little older and stopped caring so much about what people thought, I ended up developing a nickname for my my granny. And uh, I just ran. That's how I was able to say how I actually felt. So Scooby became a com- completely different person. And then uh, it was actually me blossoming. And uh, in he's like relatable to everybody. He, mm. Everybody has a cousin that's like me. Everybody has an uncle that's like me. Mm-hmm. Somebody knows someone like me. I try to be as relatable as possible and keep cool with everybody. I love that. What's up? Who's Mark Pugh? I don't, I'm still trying to figure that out. That's okay. <laughs> that's an honest um, answer. Yeah, it's, like right now in this no, world. That's, that's, that's solid. I'm, I'm a, uh, a young black male that's trying to pay his bills with his art. So. Okay. With I his know, art. That's, that's yeah. That's the, that's the dream. It is. Okay. That's, that's all I have for that question. It's a very hard question. No, nah, yeah. I mean, you made me seem like a diva just now. Nah, bro, you was prepared, bro. You know who you are, man. You spent a lot of time with yourself. You know what? I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, man. Okay. That's what I'm here for, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll start with you. How did you get into, well, you just said, like, art. Yeah. What type of art? Uh Pretty much everything, drawing, painting, music, uh, poetry, acting, comedy. So how did you end up in comedy? Uh, I guess it started when I used to watch Martin a lot. And mm. that's kind of when when I was young, I, I realized I was funny. Because I watched Martin and I would hear the laughs for stuff he'd do. And I would do stuff and then my family would laugh. And I'm like, I like how this feels. Mm-hmm. And then ever since then, mm. I, I my, one of my favorite genre, genres in music, TV, uh, movies was always comedy So it's just something I gravitated towards And then in the fifth grade That's when I did my first like stand up set And I wrote some jokes I wrote three jokes I got on stage and I forgot my third joke And I just made some up on the spot And that was my biggest laugh So I was like yeah I might have something Do you so remember the sense. joke? No nah. oh. I did like a I did an Eddie Murphy impersonation uh, uh, One of the clumps from the professors Can you do it? Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> do it. I'm not going to do it right now. Okay. I'll do it randomly. You won't expect it. Okay, okay. That's too much pressure on the spot. I don't yeah. think it is, though. You don't think so? No. But that's, 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 that's how people do comedians. Oh, you're a comedian? Yeah. Say something funny. Make me laugh. That's how I feel. Like, no. have you not been laughing this whole time? I've been paying attention to you. Like, you've been laughing. so you. Of course. <laughs> yeah, so I <laughs> made you laugh, don't <laughs> We did our job. We definitely did our job. How did you come into or get into stand-up? Uh, how I got into it, I, I went to a comedy show uh, at Louisiana Tech, and there was this guy doing stand-up at one of the college shows, and he was really bad. Like, <laughs> he was really bad. And he got he still got paid. And I'm like... If he can get paid, I can get paid. And I know, like, people have been telling me I'm funny all my life. Mm-hmm. I know I can read a room. I try to make people laugh. That's, that's who I am. Okay, cool. So I'm like, if I, if I just... I know I can do this. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, excuse me. There's a story before that. That's someone, okay. someone told me, uh, asked me to stand up with a bunch of my other friends and crack jokes, because that's what we used to do in, uh, in college, crack jokes. Mm-hmm. 
during uh, the university hour. So we did. Uh, we were planning to do, to do that. They dropped out because they had things to do. They're important people. So it was just me. We ended up going. It was an open mic that I didn't know about. Mm-hmm. I, uh, they called me up, and uh, my first joke made everybody laugh. And it was just like Mark said, the bug bit me. Like, oh, oh, okay, okay. I did this on purpose, and y'all gave me the laugh. I'm hooked. And then I just kept doing open mics. And then when I really started being like, okay, this is what I want to do, that's when I went to the, the comedy show at Tech and was like, he got paid to be horrible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, I know I'm, I can at least make a couple people laugh if I don't make everybody laugh. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to go for it. I reached out to the headlining guy, and he, uh, he kind of took me under his wing, and I, that's how I kept going. Okay. So oh, beautiful, Scooby. I'm long winded, bro. It's okay. I'm sorry. Because I don't have much to say. So as long as you eat up all that time. It's a good balance. It's a that's, great balance. That's normally how we are, though. Yeah. That's my boy. Oh, so y'all know each other. We just met today. He just said you're his boy. Is that you how guys, that that's, works? That's how that works. So you guys both swiped right on Tinder then? <laughs> First of all. First of all, <laughs> ain't no guys if I'm on Tinder. <laughs> I'm not no on Tinder, so. If I'm on Tinder, like. No, nah, like, you know. I don't use Tinder how, anyway. First black men bond real fast. Once we see another black man, we like, what's up? Yeah, it and don't they, really. They it don't take that much. Nah, but you just become work. boys? Yeah. yeah, we don't, like. We had the same struggles, and we understand just from the way we shake hands. So we was just like, yeah. We don't yeah, have yeah. to like go on like a couple dinners like you know how kind of like other people do. They just like yeah. go on dinners and I got to get to know her. And, right, right. Because y'all be telling like deep dark secrets. We just be like, hey man, you caught the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Everything good with you and your girl? Yeah, yeah. Bit. All right, cool. <laughs> That's it. Very surface level. Very surface level. Because we don't need to know all that about each other. Like, and then it be that ra- one random time where you just like break down and then you call and be like, hey man, I ain't doing t- so good. And be like, hey bro, just just lay it on me. Right. Like the one one time where. Like we can hang out 10 times and not really have a deep conversation. And then that 11th time, like, hey, bro, I need to tell you something. Hey, bro, I got time for you. But you can't be doing this every week, though. Right. (laughs) Okay. Because you only have time for one girlfriend. Right. Because you only need one girlfriend. Okay. That makes sense. So. I don't know where this is going. Aside from all of that, how do you guys know each other? Uh, Bro, how did we meet? I don't even know. (laughs) I I don't know. I honestly, that's, that's. That's honestly, I don't even remember. Don't but even know. have y'all like worked together before? Like, have, oh, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Like I don't know how we. Mm, maybe it was. It was probably. A, Ma- no, nah, I, I met you way before that. It had to be a comedy show or something. It, yeah, it, it had to be something with comedy. I don't. But you know how Shreveport is. You always know people before you meet them anyway. Most yeah, mo- time, most so. people are that are in are creatives. They run into someone close in their genre all the time. You know what, mm. what I'm saying? So. You know, it's other comedians that I know, but I, I only know what I know you through. I Like, I only know I know him through comedy mm-hmm. right. or something like that. I know me and him never worked together, stuff like that. Now, we yeah. might have, we, we have a bunch of mutual friends yeah. uh, that are also in arts and creative. So, mm-hmm. we probably just met in past or somewhere like that, exchange numbers. Hey, dog, I need you for this. I might need you for that. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and then... Uh, we really we really got real uh, tight when we started doing, doing a... Uh, one of a podcast for me uh, mm-hmm. that we <laughs> we don't ever really do anymore. We on the third episode. What was the name of it? <laughs> and we started uh, two years ago. Chain podcast. I don't think I've heard of that before. Yeah, I know we don't. <laughs> we only got <laughs> we on the third friends. episode. You know like, we gonna plug it though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I guess we got to start back doing it for real. Yep. Y'all want to come out, hang out? Yeah, okay, hey, absolutely. Can, we can we can do that. All right, so. Sure. Okay, guys. We ain't got no cameras though, so. <laughs> we we as long as we have nice microphones so. and people oh, can hear us talk, microphone. we're good. It's so just we just one. all share it. Yeah, yeah, we just put it right there in the middle, and you just try to speak as loud as you possible. You see how big that table is right there? We're gonna put the microphone. Yeah, it's gonna be on the table, like, and the laptop gonna be like right there next to it. Yeah, I probably so. not. I don't talk that loud, so. Oh, whatever. I don't. <laughs> You but, see the microphones like right here. I mean, we can shoot it up here if you want to. <laughs> job, man. We'll probably have to ask Sydney about that. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I y'all just. <laughs> all right, then. It's a probably a yes, though. All right, cool. Well, hey, let guess, me know. I guess, I guess we really got to do it now. I'm with it. I'm with it. All right. Okay, so as a creative, I feel like it's super important to have, like, different outlets. I don't know if y'all agree with that statement. Um, do y'all agree with that statement? Yeah. yeah. 
So, like, sure. what are some of the different outlets that y'all have outside of, like, comedy? Uh, I love live bands. I love music. I am a music mm. head through and through. I mm-hmm. listen to all genres of music. And that, and I have a therapist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's important. <laughs> like, most um. important, I have a therapist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I don't want people to just think every time I feel some type of way, I just listen to music. I mean, because there's nothing wrong with that if that helps you. But uh, sometimes I need to use my words. Uh, sometimes I don't need to use my words. I need to just mm-hmm. feel whatever is going on. I might need to listen to a song that makes me feel whatever way I'm feeling or right. that understands what I'm feeling. So Flush it out. Yeah. So music and my therapist are my biggest two. What about you? Uh I'm just playing. Uh, you can't <laughs> say that. Oh, uh, no, for real. Golly. Um, Michael, you're gonna have to like bleep that out or something. God. Mark. Uh, so what's my outlets? Uh, I actually you make music, so <laughs> that's my outlet for real. Like I write a lot, so I'm either doing poetry or music. Uh-huh. And the other thing that I said, um, I had a therapist, but okay. got too expensive. No, yeah, yeah, that's a real, oh, that's dude. a real struggle, though. That's a real so question. out of comedy and everything else you do, like poetry and everything. What, like, what did you get in first, and how did that translate into like your different hobbies? I, it was art. I started drawing. I've been okay. drawing since I, ever since I could pick up a pencil. I, uh, you know how like kids draw on the walls and stuff. Mm-hmm. That usually they get like whoopings or some kind of discipline. What saved me from getting beat. From drawing on the walls was the fact that I drew a perfect circle on the wall, and my parents are just like, "Hold on, like this is a perfect circle." So ever since then, I just been drawing, mm. and that always led to something else. And I'm the type of person where if I see something and I like it, I'm interested in it, I'm gonna try it. And if I really enjoy it, I just keep doing it until I like master it or whatever. So that's kind of how that all the snowballs down. For the record, his parents are so sweet. I love them. Yeah, to y'all. <laughs> I mean, I ain't gonna say they're not sweet, but you know they. My mom Every time from, I see them, I just be see so the girl, happy to see them. So. Your mom's very sweet. I be he so has happy very to sweet parents. Oh, thank really you. Does, I agree. So Godly, they made a good guy. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so who would y'all like say, who makes up your support system? Uh, yep. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean the the fans, but like you mean like when when I'm not interacting with people like in the crowd, uh, like when you feel like you're running like a creative drought, like you can't come up with any new stories, jokes, or anything, or like someone who, that's just always just there. Yeah, uh, like friends, for you. friends and family, uh, other com- definitely most definitely other comedians mm-hmm. uh, because they are either they've been there before. Or they're going through it with you. So, mm-hmm. for the most part, and you only reach out to the people that you know possibly have felt that way or that have reached out to you. Like, you know, I've, okay. like, I told Mark, well, I'm about to go on a drive. I'm about to stop doing this and focus on this. And I understand Mark because he has so many different instruments he can use. He understands, okay, I'm tired of doing music right now. Let me do some comedy. Okay, I'm tired of doing comedy right now. Let me do this digital art. Let me uh, let me do this. I'm plugging in, my boy. Appreciate doing, that, my boy. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, because he has that, he understands being exhausted, being being tired of doing this one a- avenue. Uh, so, it's mostly supporting comedians. But, you know, of course, you got your parents. And if you have uh, any significant others, uh you know, those are supposed to be your basis background, you mm-hmm. know. So, my my son thinks I'm hilarious. That's all that matters. Yeah, and I my, do. Him and my mama, they, like, they think I'm the funniest people in the world. Well, then that's all that matters. So, what do you do when you start feeling burnt out? Like, take I take a break. I'm <laughs> I'm not at the I'm not at the status where I'm doing it full time. Mm-hmm. So, uh now I ain't going to say uh I can't pay no bills with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not my my in, it's not my major income. Okay. So if creatively I'm not feeling up to par, and I feel like I'm exhausted, I'm drained, I'm doing all this, I'm doing all that. I will step back, you know. Uh, I'll wipe the calendar off. Mm-hmm. Now, not with shows. Mm-hmm. Now, if I'm booked to do something, big boy up, 
and do do your job because you know mm-hmm. they pay you to do your job. But if it's just something that I got, like I might plan a creative day for myself at the house where I block everything out and I'm just in my room writing jokes or working on some visual material, then uh, I'll just, you know what, not today. I'm just going to feel it out, see how I do it. And if I feel like doing it, I'll do it. If I don't, I'm okay. Okay. Right. And what about you? Like, who would, who is your support system made up of? Uh, Man, like he said, the first kind of first buffer is uh friends and family and um i got my parents i got a couple homies uh scooby included um you know if you got a significant other sometimes and comedians as well too they uh because they understand the struggle of the different things we have to deal with Mm -hmm. but uh that's pretty much it how do you like bounce back from being like in a drought yeah uh, wait it out. You kind of just gotta be present and uh realize that whatever you're going through is only temporary. But it's hard when you're in the middle of the storm. You think like, nah, this is it. This is how it's gonna be forever. Mm-hmm. But even with even like happiness, happiness don't last all the time. It right. goes away. Then the droughts come, and you just gotta stick with it, stick through it, and kind of just be present and let it subside. Because usually on the other side of that is more gold. Mm-hmm. So just having to remind myself. It's all going to be all right. Just get through it. Where does the content come from when you are, like, in your creative process or, like, in the mode? I don't know. It's just It just hit me like a wave, and I'm just I'm just doing it. Mm-hmm. So anytime I'm, like, inspired, whatever I'm doing, I'm just there. Um, I'm shutting everybody out, and it's not intentional. It's just, like, I don't want anything to take away from this, whatever I'm in right now, because it never comes back. And if it does, it comes back in a different way. Mm-hmm. So a lot of songs that I've done, if I don't do it right there and I don't record the whole song, then it's either a one minute song or it's not finished. Gotcha. Right. So, Can you relate to that? Uh yeah. So with with me, uh it's it's definitely an in the moment thing. Now mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say mine don't come back to me because my stuff is well not my stuff, but when I when I think of a joke, it's normally in that moment what's going on. So if it, it's normally when I'm behind the wheel of a, a car, too. Like, I might be driving. Now. Oh, that's the worst. How do you remember that? Uh, you try to do your best or take out your phone at the uh, at the light. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, or pull over. Like, I, like, I ain't going to lie to you. I've, I've made myself laugh driving and pulled over just so I could be like, I have to remember this. This is something I have to do. Yeah. Uh, and I used to be really bad at, bad about that because, you know, you think, oh, it's so funny. I'll remember it. Mm-hmm. And then you sitting at the house like, ah, Lee, what, what is was that talking about? Man, what was I talking about? Yeah, like, no wording. Like, you can't get the wording right. Right. So, yeah. uh, and I I take things that happen in my life, exaggerate them, minimize them. Yeah. Uh, good, bad, uh, trauma, tragedy, all that. You right. Know, I, I try to take all that. And uh, as a comedian, your job is to be relatable, uh, relevant, and most definitely, uh Real, mm-hmm. so uh, the three R's. Uh, <laughs> Write that down. Too. <laughs> yeah, somebody make sure y'all get that back to me. <laughs> okay, uh, I got a copy right there. Uh, <laughs> Michael, but, write that down. Three yeah, R's of comedy. So, uh, you want to you want to do all that, and you are pulling back from bad stories, like things yeah. that happen. Like the whole reason why I don't pick on people in the crowds is because I was bullied as a kid, mm-hmm. so I know what it's like to be singled out. Yeah. Right. Now, that don't mean don't mess with me when I'm on there. Because if you if you pick on me, I'm going to pick on you, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got a microphone so everybody can hear me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I might just have to bluff you because I might not have anything to say about you. Because uh-huh. you clean as a mug. And you look like you got a whole lot of money. And I'm up here telling these jokes, you know, and I ain't got what you got. So it all depends. I just I try to keep it as real as possible. But, uh, yeah. So with, like... You said that you use, like, s- the stuff that you've gone through, like, to pretty much help you write your, or, yeah, come up with your content. Does the fear of, like, it not translating over to the crowd ever kick in? Like, how do you deal with feeling like it's not going to? So, I'm not going to say my material is basic. hmm mm-hmm. Something cut my eyes at you? <laughs> hmm I'm not going to say my... <laughs> <laughs> 
But that was good, Scooby. Some of thank you. Some of the things that I've gone through, everyone has gone through. Yeah, you know, or not if if not everyone, a specific group of people have gone through. Mm-hmm. Uh, like everybody's had almost everybody's had their heart broken, mm-hmm. so everybody relates to that. Mm-hmm. But uh, guys know what it feels like to be taking care of a kid that isn't his. Mm-hmm. Like some people, women can never feel that. Right, men can. So if I start telling this joke to this specific set of people, they're definitely going to feel me on this. And, you know, that's something. I, but it also shares my story because I'm an open person. Mm-hmm. I I don't hold nothing back. If I'm telling you a story on stage, nine times out of ten, I'd have been in that predicament somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of exaggerated the point. Mm-hmm. But, like, what I give to y'all or my life experience, things I've gone through, stories I've heard. So it's it's wild. Like I don't know. I can't really explain. Is that why you go by Wild Man Scoob? No. Well, so when I was younger, I was <laughs> I'm more like the mild man Scoob now. But when I was younger, oh okay. Ah, you got that? Yeah, I don't want to have to cut anything else out. Mm, so uh, <laughs> I was I was the life of the party when I was younger, man. Like when I came in, everybody's about to have a good time. I'm about to crack jokes. We about to dance. All this. So. Yeah. Uh, and I, I used to drink a lot. Okay. Drink a whole lot. So, uh, I was the, I was a party animal and I was just, I was wild, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and at that time having a good Twitter handle, cause I'm that old, mm-hmm. uh, when I like the baby ages of Twitter, when you found that good Twitter handle, you had to hold on to it. Yeah. Cause, so when I found it, I just stuck with it and that's how the wild man school just became. Cause initially it was just wild man school, mm-hmm. but then my I got hacked at like 10k. You know what I'm saying? I was oh, dang. Yeah, that's see having 10k then was good. Yeah, yeah. it still is. It still is. Yeah, yeah. I got hacked at like 10k. You know what I'm saying? And uh, <laughs> 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 and uh, then I had to recreate the name, and then I had to just put the D in it. And I always like when people put put D in front of theirs, like you know, the Grambling State University. Yeah. Well. You know, I just I because it make, making D style like when you do stuff super like official. That, yeah, like hey, I like that. So that's him. Yep, because there's only one. Yeah, and it's the wild man school. Right. Right. So how do you, Mark, get over the feeling of like failure? Like this joke isn't gonna. I don't think people are really gonna like this one. Or do you have well, people, that? Uh, yeah. What were you saying? Did you ever have like? Both of you, did you ever have like a situation where you tell a joke and like nobody laughs? Oh, for sure. <laughs> Plenty yeah. of times. It happens Plenty all time. the time. How do you like bounce back from that being on stage and everybody's just staring at you? All these eyes are just staring at you and they're like, uh, Be this funnier funny. than your last joke. <laughs> that one didn't work. Get them with something else. I know yeah. it's saying that it's, it's harder. It's easier said than done, but mm-hmm. I, I don't care about bombing no more. I, yeah. I, I just got to that point where I, it's just like, like, I don't like. Because you can literally be on a good run, three, four shows, killing them, yeah. boom, boom, boom. You like money coming in, good people booking you for other stuff, like yeah. yeah. And then you had that one show, and nobody <laughs> understands who you are. Nobody, nothing translates. Mm-hmm. And after that one show, after five, six, seven successful, well paid shows, yeah, you sitting in the green room or wherever you, wherever you at, like. Am I really really supposed to be doing this? Yeah. <laughs> like mm-hmm. now you just had hundreds of people laughing at you over more more than one venue. And then you come to this one venue. One venue. It breaks you down. And you be like, Am I really supposed to be telling jokes? Like I'm the worst person ever. To, and it it will bring you back there, but also it's kinda like when you said how you get over get, get over failure. You just move past it. I don't care about bombing no more. If you didn't like this, I'm pretty sure when I go to somewhere mm-hmm. else. It's going to translate, and I'm going to do well. You always have to remember that you have to you have to see it through. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. Do you know how many comedians we would not have if they just stopped? We wouldn't have the right. Eddie Murphys right. if they just stopped after their first bad show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was having a bad run one time, and people stayed asking me to be on shows, and my mama was just like, Somebody sees something, mm-hmm. and I just, I'm not understanding it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm just doing all these shows, and yada, yada, yada. And even when, uh, uh, my mentor took me, and I wasn't like doing great. I wasn't doing bad, but I'm like, why does he keep asking me? I'm not getting the, I'm not getting the response that he need. But he saw something that I couldn't see. Mm. So, uh, yeah. So is it like humbling? Very, very. Ooh, I, 
<laughs> he was yes. talking about a three show run. How about three shows in one day? Two shows, same material, all three shows. The first two shows, you kill. You get to the second show. Who would show, be that last one, man? Different places, everybody laugh. That one show make you feel like you don't need to be doing nothing. And it, the funny part about it, it could be like the show you knew, I, like, I knew I was going to kill this one. <laughs> it always know, that one. The first two, you'd be like, uh, you know, I picked this up for the money, or mm-hmm. I, like, I just. You know, I'm just work out some new material. You smash those, but wasn't even expecting it. You get to the one place you know you're supposed to kill. You don't. And you just like, oh, <laughs> like, what am I doing? Uh huh. What are some of the, I don't know if you can say like the cities or like the places, but like where have you gotten some of like the best laughs or like the, like just great support? Uh, Leesville, all, my, all the small places I do. Leesville, Mansfield, I did a, uh, I did a little place in Arkansas. I don't even remember. Uh, bad, like small places because some of those people they actually they come to laugh. Mm-hmm. Like you mm-hmm. know they're expecting they're expecting something and they get it, so they laugh. Mm-hmm. Other places, you know, like I I did good. I, I've performed in Atlanta and I performed in uh, in uh, Oakland, and they understood me, but they were kind of like okay. It was kind of, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that's funny, yeah. but I don't want to give you my whole laugh. Mm-hmm. But the smaller places I've gone, they're like, I'm about to fall out this chair laughing at you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they, they appreciate it. Not saying that the bigger cities don't. Uh, but you can see it. Like yeah. You can like, see the appreciation more. Like, I, I like small venues, like 30, 40 people. Yeah. yeah. That's, Them let's do that. Let's sure. do that. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's, intimate shows where it's just like you, small room, and the people. Not all that extra stuff. Them, them are the best shows. Cause, cause they, want, they wanna, they wanna have, they, they wanna, wanna have, have a fun. good time. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like they, they came to have a good time. Like especially if they know it's gonna be comedy there, mm-hmm. that's always a plus. Like, yeah. like them pop up comedy shows. Like we about to start doing it in this club or this bar. Mm-hmm. Them be the worst ones because you gotta compete with so much. Now, it, it also gets your chops right too, though. Sure. Because then you, you fighting against the pool game. You fighting against the football game on TV. Somebody doing something else in the corner is loud, just conversation. So you learn in the process of all of that. It's and you don't realize it until you've conquered it. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, and that's keep going through. Like I'm, I'm steady doing this bar. I just, like, and you like, golly. And then you get into a a decent room, and the same situations that happen while you were in those small spots, you're you're able to grasp that and be like, hey. This is what I need y'all to do in this room right here. And when you grab that, have that authority, people in the back, they'll be quiet. People on the watch, that's watching the game, they'll hush up. You know, so it's it's definitely something you grow with. Yeah, especially hosting. Oh. How have, um, what are some of the better shows that you've had, like the cities, or I don't know if you can say like the actual names of the shows, but for um, you, like your experience? We've been going to Dallas a lot. Like every week, um, a lot I of Texas stuff. Going to Dallas. You know about it? Every Tuesday, it, uh, I'm, I'm gonna send you the info. It's on Instagram. It do be on Instagram. He like really posts his whole life on Instagram. I don't really be on Instagram. Like I don't I'm, be on I'm Instagram. Old, I'm an old man. I be on Facebook. Oh, uh, so do I. Okay. <laughs> Are y'all friends? Are friends now? <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty basic, so yeah, like, man, she don't she don't like basic people. <laughs> she like, don't like basic people. Oh my people. gosh! All basic, all basic coffee drinks. Yeah, I don't know. Check them out. I'm still waiting on that uh, the extravagant drink. I'm waiting on the. Still don't drinks. know what. Anyway, what was you? What were you asking me? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> some of the some of the better shows you've had, oh, like the, the better places. Show, definitely smaller places. There's a place in Dallas we go to. Uh, it's called. Well, the name of the show is called Talent Tap In by a guy named Josh Drake. Uh, Switch Alert on Instagram. He hosts an uh, open mic. Well, it's like an open mic slash show every Tuesday. It's in a hookah lounge. Mm-hmm. It's, it's real. It's about it's 1.5 bigger than this room. About this room and a half of this room put together. Okay. And and it's a hookah lounge? Yeah, yep. So it's filled with hookah smoke. Nah, I can see like everybody, be don't, be, the everybody don't buy the hookah. Oh, uh, I'm like, They'd be oh, in there. So. It'd miserable. be like three or four gangsters in there smoking hookah and that's it. Okay. And then everybody else just come for the drink. Okay. <laughs> Is it hookah they smoke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But yeah, uh, definitely that place in Dallas. Um, this it be random places. It's a place uh, I used to love going to Josh Lounge uh, on that open mic. I just started doing comedy one day up there downtown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where the old people go? 
Yeah, yeah. Be yeah. Singing a song, I'm guessing, and then you just start telling jokes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went in there and asked him like, hey. for karaoke. Yeah, and you just start telling jokes. Yeah, <laughs> it worked out wonderful. I didn't even tell you them didn't, jokes. I you didn't even ask the them. Like well, I asked the dude because the dude who uh, who was over the house band, mm-hmm. I knew him, so I just asked okay. him if I could. He was like, hell yeah! So I got up there. And then I bombed like the third time I did it, and he never talked to me again. So yeah, no, Ruined that relationship. That's cold. That's cold blooded right there. Yeah. Man. He ain't even want to talk to you no more. You did nah. that bad. Yeah, because the two first times I went, I did amazing. Bombing is fun sometimes. It's it's the greatest feeling ever. Some, sometimes you never get that feeling if you can if you laugh at yourself it. though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, sometimes bombing like it's not okay to bomb. I mean, it is okay to bomb, but like. Sometimes it's funny because you that crowd you know your jokes are funny. Mm-hmm. They they work plenty of other places, mm-hmm. but sometimes you'd be like, you know what, y'all don't even get this. <laughs> yeah, and then they be like, yeah, whatever, yada yada yada. And you be like, yeah, it's like it's don't make fun of your crowd, but sometimes you just be like, <laughs> golly, like this was bad. Like it was, and you just laugh it, laugh it off. Like so, it's like. It's like a it's not me, it's you type moment. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Then sometimes. It's a, it's a lot of different it's elements me. that go into bombing. It could be your audience's perception of you, whatever happened, how you feeling, something else that happened. You mm-hmm. might They might not have heard you say one word correctly. They mm-hmm. might have misheard you say something, so they mess up the whole flow of the joke. Oh, oh, man. Or somebody heckle you and you trying to like... Because, see, a lot of time what happened to me, if somebody heckle me, I can make that funny, but then that throws off the whole trajectory of the yeah. jokes. Mm-hmm. Now you got to get back into that mode, and it's it's hard. And Once that's like, setup. so for stand-up, like, is it written, or is it like you're literally just on stage, like, off the top of your head? It really, for me, it really depends on how I'm feeling. I throw in, if I'm working on new material, I throw in, like, some freestyling, stuff I know work, and then throw in something else to just make it all flow and see how it works. How does that work? But it's all memorized? Uh, okay. So it's different for Like different how comedians. big does your brain have to be to do that? I don't know. So it's it's I mean, you're supposed to write. Uh however, it's about what's going on. You have to be attentive to the crowd. That's one reason like I like to show up early. Okay. So I can see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh if a comedian is up there doing a joke and you see you're not getting anywhere. With that type of material, sometimes it's not best to start off with that type of material. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to know your audience, things like that. Uh, you get because you, you can get on stage with I'm gonna do one, two, three, A, B, C, mm-hmm. and you get up there and you start doing one, and it's not really working out how you want to work work out. But they open up a door for A, B, C. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take A, B, C, mm-hmm. work it in. And then I might come back to two, three. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. mm-hmm. it's it's about the crowd's response. I can get up there and start talking about church. Everybody loves church. Mm-hmm. And then you have to be sly or slick with it, how to go from, I don't just got to be talking about church, to I'm about to jump right into six. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Some crowds will accept that. Some crowds won't. You can have fillers. You know, it's just, you have to be... You have to be on stage. It's a. Yeah. I can't tell you it's gonna work like this every time because it's not gonna work like that every time. Mm-hmm. You might have a heckler. You might have something big that might happen right in the middle. I was doing a. I was doing a show. <laughs> I was doing a show on my birthday. On my birthday. When's your birthday? July twenty sixth. I'm a Leo. Okay, that was, that's what I was asking. That was very like. I'm I was Leo, asking. Like, that's why. Yeah. That was quick. Look how their faces perked up when you said Leo. <laughs> well, he's a fire sign, just like me. Yeah, so I'm doing these jokes on stage. The lights completely go out. Uh-huh. I just did a joke about working at uh, the electric company and people not paying their bill. So <laughs> when the light go out, what do you think I'm about to do? The comedy club didn't pay the bill. Do I keep going on with the joke I was going? Because I was about to pivot to a whole other mm-hmm. subject. So what I do is I'm going to talk about these lights being out. For a little while, that gives them time to see what's going on with the lights, yeah. yada yada. But it's still keeping you entertained. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, why would I? This is free material right here. Yeah. Right. Why would I? If I got one, two, three, and I'm about to jump to ABC, if I can extend three a little longer, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. And then, whenever the lights come on, if they come on, I can know. I know where I'm at. I know if I didn't use too much time or what to end with. Mm-hmm. You know okay. what I'm saying? So. Uh, I forgot the question. It's okay. 
Because I did too. I feel like we were just talking at this point. So you got to yeah. be a little quick on your feet. Right. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. You, Very you agile. Got, you got to be witty. You, uh, sure. you, you got to know what's going on. You got to pay attention. You got to keep your head on the swivel. I would not do well in stand up then because I am not aware of anything going on around me. We don't want that to happen. We want we want you to know what's going on. Pay no, I just enjoy you watching y'all do stuff like that. Um, so, did you have you ever had like people like come up to you afterwards or get like comments that you were like offensive or anything? All the time. And like, how do you deal with that? <laughs> oh, really? <All> the time. <laughs> <laughs> how do you deal with that? To you? Oh, sure. <laughs> on the stage, off the stage, I all see the time. That. Yeah. Oh God, no! Do like, you just not care? You just say I I don't care because I know I'm not a hateful person, and I know the intent of my jokes aren't to be hateful. A lot of people get that misconstrued. They hear the subject oh, that offends them, and then people laugh, and they assume that they are to be laughed at, and that's not oh. that's not what it is. Now, if somebody start talking noise while I'm on stage, then I'm you know I'll say something. That's different. That's different, but. Um, you know, in a certain rooms where they welcome you talking about them, because mm -hmm. like at Josh Lyons, my first night, I told zero jokes. Mm -hmm. I was just cracking on the audience. I was roasting the audience the whole time, and they enjoyed it. And some some uh, large dude was up there, and I spent like five minutes talking about him, and he was going back and forth. And I was like, yeah. I like that. I'm finna. And so it was it was fun, but yeah, all the time people. I don't like the way you said that. I was like, okay, I'm sorry that you feel that That's way. That's how you respond to it. No. So you don't How do you respond? respond? I, it depends on the energy and what it is, because some certain people be like, they get they misunderstand what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. and a lot of times when people are, are that upset, they're not trying to hear anything except an I'm apology sorry. or they're, something they're not, like that. They're right. not wrong in their opinion. They're, they're not right. trying to they're understand. Not accept, they're not yeah. accepting whatever it is. They just like yeah. this is how I feel. I'm right. You're wrong. And until you apologize to me, yeah. yeah. Have you had that happen? <laughs> Believe it or not, I don't know, not too often. Uh, no. I picked that up from you, though. Uh, yeah, I I try. For, if, if anything, somebody's trying to buy me a drink because I was funny, and I appreciate <laughs> that so much. I love that's the other part about so, doing stand up. Now, hold on. Uh, oh, yeah, no, Mark, Mark, <laughs> like, <laughs> when Mark gets on stage, we know two things about to happen mm -hmm. either they about to love him or, or they about hate to hate him. him. Anyway, it goes, he got your attention. Oh, so you're that type of he, like, uh, I guess so. Because it's someone is going to laugh at Mark, mm -hmm. someone is going to laugh because Mark has his humor that's dark and relatable. Mm -hmm. So, someone's going to laugh, and then somebody's going to make a face or something, and Mark is going to catch it, mm -hmm. or somebody's going to make a uh, and then he'll be like, What? and then it, like, master at the art, I promise you. Like, right. he literally called the woman out her name on stage. Not calling her out her name, yeah. but she thought he did. Uh -huh. That's how he said people get mixed up in it. And because she reacted a certain way, Mark went off on her, which was hilarious to everybody. She made herself the joke. Like, okay. So, oh, and mind you, that situation, she was very drunk. That very night, drunk. And very I was the rude. second comedian on stage. And the host got up. She was being belligerent then. And it just, it, it was like an uptick. Mm -hmm. Like her and her brother was drunk. It was a birthday. Everybody that got on stage, it was another comedian. It was she was real green, so was, she was still trying to find her feet. Like it was a feature show too, mm -hmm. so she was like an opener for a feature show, a big show. Mm -hmm. And they're just like loud and ah, they wanted to be the center of attention at the comedy. So show. you made them the center of attention. Yeah, because I'm like, exactly you right. don't okay. do that to. So we can we can go there with me. I'm fine because yeah, the the owner of the club can be like, you're no longer welcome. I'm like, cool, I respect that, but I'm still going. Get I'm still gonna be. Yeah. He got off the stage and we were like, "Hey, man, you can't do that." But that was great. Like <laughs> they were yeah. like, they it, were like, like it, it was every, everybody in the crowd understood it. Yeah. She well, it was well deserved. But normally that ain't what you do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Okay. Like, it was so funny because like him and Munch and I think another like they're my OGs in the comedy game. So they came up to me and I'm like, "Oh, they finna get in my butt. They finna tear me up." They was like, "Where do you want to get booked at?" Mm -hmm. Oh, really? And then it was like. But that was funny. I was like, okay, yeah, that's that's all I needed. It's kind of one of those things, like, we know Dave Chappelle can say certain things and get no backlash. Mm -hmm. But we know some other comedian can't say that. Right. Like, like you know, Mark. Right. Yeah. See, I... <laughs> God. <laughs> 
I, I, but I feel like he's more of like the Dave Chappelle type right, comedian, no, right. where he can get it away is. with saying more things than like if but you, you know, got on stage and said something, it's yeah, the right. it wouldn't translate the same right. way. Okay, got it. Right, it's it's certain things I don't I don't talk about because I know I won't be able to translate it well. Mark can say some things. And they'll be like, oh, I understand. I can tell Mark how I feel. And he can make it sound like that. And I'd be like, yeah, that's what I meant. But I couldn't do that. So it's not all the same. Stand up is not all the same. No. no it's, not it's, even close. No, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it pays the right. Yeah. <laughs> like, it really pays the right. Like, you also have to find your audience, too. Like, yeah, every you, everyone has, has a niche. Their, yep. Everybody has their type of comedy. And, you know, there's people that tell... Y'all might watch somebody and be like, these jokes are corny, mm-hmm. but they making millions of dollars. Kevin Hart. Millions Ooh. of dollars. That's, yeah. that's rough. But well, that's, I was just that's joking. a different story. That, that was my type. That was my comedy. That, that, that was funny. Oh. But yeah. I laughed. I, didn't yeah, I was laugh just out joking. Loud, yeah, I didn't laugh out loud. I was, I was like, ooh, taking shots at Kevin. No, I was just joking. But now, like, that's, that's a different story. That's, he's, he's trying to make all the money he can. So mm-hmm. he's, he's trying to make his jokes palatable to more people. Yep. And with that comes less and less funny because Unlike Dave Chappelle. Right, right. He's he has his audience. Yeah. Okay. But there's people like that there's some don't people that cuss. think Dave Chappelle is not funny at yeah. all. And I just don't understand. I don't understand it either. But like, I don't know that. But yeah. com- comedy is subjective really. So you got people that do uh with prop comedy. Yeah. Uh, I'm not into prop comedy. I can do impersonations, but I don't like to because I don't want I don't want to become that guy like Jay Farrell. He's like, funnier uh, than this stuff, but it's just like do the voice, and I'm yeah, like I don't. Do do don't Every Spears was like that for a while too, though. For sure. Like with the he's, he's funnier than his he is impression. hilarious. He's a god, bro. He's yeah, he's he's good. Yeah, but yeah. I worked with him. <laughs> you did? Um, yeah. And we are gonna talk about that afterwards. At the funny, at the funny bone. Yeah, man. <laughs> like bro, who's Jay Farrell? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, golly, I hope that never happens to me. <laughs> it's okay. I'm thinking the same thing. Yeah, no, I get it. Uh, Jay, okay, Jerry Fer- Jay Farrell was on Saturday Night Live. He was. Yeah, uh, he's done a lot of stuff though. Yeah, I mean, and, was he like in any movies that I would know? Uh, Probably not. He was so like he's like a stand up comedian, and if I don't follow stand up, I wouldn't know him. Kind of. Oh, no, do you I watch mean, Saturday Night Live? No. See, well, nah. It's, yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah. But like. You got a movie with Cat Williams. I'm, I'm just no, saying. No, no idea. No. Thank yeah, you, man. Like, uh, so, yeah, I, I can't explain. He was on Saturday Night Live. He was one of the players there. And then, you know, I think he he had a show with Jamie Foxx for like two episodes. Was it the we, Jamie Foxx show? I think I know who you're talking about. No. Yeah. You know him? I no. think he I do. He currently has something out right now. I don't know. I Not to sound rude, but I really don't be paying attention to nobody else. I got you. Like, and it's, I don't mean that in a rude way. I just... Like, when I see my dudes working, I be like, congratulations, man. I see you working, yada, yada, yada. And I get back to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I try to stay in my lane. Uh, if, right. if I can promote a show, I'll promote a show. If I need to be on a show, I'll do it. But for the most part, I'm Is not. Fair. I don't know him. Mm-mm. I'm not. I ain't out here just searching what people doing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm not like, oh, right. let me see what Dave Spill doing. Or let me see what Kevin Hart or Nav Green or all these other people. Right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing that. You know, if it comes up on my feed, I'm going to watch it. But I'm not going to – I don't – I just don't be keeping up with people like that. Do you think that helps you with, like, comparing you to somebody like Kevin Hart or uh, – No, nah, I don't know. My phone's ringing. Hold on. Uh, hey, Jay Farrell calling. Yeah, probably so. You heard me use his name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, so uh, – No, because what – what it does for me is when I write my material and I go somewhere or I'm watching something and I hear something like what I wrote, mm-hmm. it makes me be like, okay, I can write this for somebody else because somebody had the same idea as me, which can also be like, I need to do better because me and this other person wrote the same material. Did we deliver it the same way, though? Because me and, me and Mark can have a joke about a couch. Everybody know what a couch is, but if, if me and Mark, Mark deliver the same joke, people going to be like, oh, he took that from that other guy. Mm-hmm. It all depends on who delivered it first. Or I like the other guy's couch joke better than this one. You know what I'm saying? But they would deliver different. So I don't know. I just don't be checking for people. Like, I don't. So it's not, like, offensive if somebody. Oh, just... don't steal no jokes. Okay. Don't steal jokes. So we don't steal jokes. We do not steal oh. jokes. Now, don't get me wrong. There is nothing new under the sun. 
Right. Nothing new under the sun, but do not, do not steal my jokes. And also, and I know this all sounds crazy, people think the same. If you had some of the same experiences, of course, some, I, Mark can be on stage and I know exactly where he's going with his joke mm-hmm. because I'm a creative, I think like this. And then Kevin Hart can be on stage and he's telling a joke and I know exactly where he's going with this because I'm a creative, I, this is what mm-hmm. I do. Matter of fact, when Kevin Hart was on uh, Saturday Night Live, he did this James Brown, uh, James Brown uh, skit. And I know a year ahead, a year ago, I was talking to one of my friends at the time about James Brown because I love James Brown. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you the the skit was almost identical, sometimes that makes me feel like okay, I I do have what it takes mm-hmm. to write this because if I thought of this, then I can think of other things with other people because right. I might not be the front man forever, but if I can write for you, I'm still going to get paid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Does that sometimes, though, like take the fun out of comedy? Like, because you know what's going to come? No. Nah. It don't It don't take the fun out of it because... Or like in just enjoying like somebody else's like show. Like, does that sometimes, because like if you like think like the thought process is similar mm-hmm. and you know like like what's coming... Like after they get through whatever, like you know what the end joke is going to be. Does that sometimes take the fun or like the so, you know, funniness, the away? sense of enjoyment? Yeah, or, yeah. Only if you're about to go up and you watch somebody tell a joke that's the same premise as yours, and you're like, okay, well I can't tell that. Mm, uh, then so that's when it's not get, funny. Yeah. Okay. And it's it'll still be funny, but when when you're in that mode, you're kind of like in business mode. It's like, mm-hmm. all right, so let me make sure I don't say what they just said. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I hate. It, and it doesn't bother me. I hate when, uh, especially if the person that's about to break me up or the person that's gone before me, they they see me perform before. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, you know, kind of how I like to run my set. We've worked together before, mm-hmm. and if you get up and do something, that similar you know, to yeah, you, yeah, like I'm kind of now. I get it. If you got to go for it, I understood because this is as much as this is a. This is a one player game. Stand up is a one player game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now you can all work together, but it's still a one player game. So I understand you doing it. Now that don't make it right. Mm-hmm. Now I got to get up, and either I can deliver it a different way, or you know, stick to my gun and go with it, whatever it is. I just yeah. I don't know if, if Mark is doing a joke about I don't know sneakers. I'm not about to get up and start off with a sneaker joke. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or if if I do, I I need to know how to manage the joke a, a different way because. Right. You know, some jokes, you can have different avenues for them. You can go one way, you can go another way. It all depends on the crowd's response. And that's kind of the art of being in the midst of being on stage and mm-hmm. off the top of your head, stuff like that. Yeah. I look at any challenge, like if something like that, if if he went up before me and I got a, my whole set is about sneakers and he going to do five minutes on sneakers, I'm like, all right, I look at that as a challenge and I welcome that because then I'm using my whole mm-hmm. set to see – how good am I really, and what do I need to improve upon? Mm-hmm. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, any, any like, any, whether it's bombing, a heckle, if somebody in the audience is funnier than me, mm-hmm. I look at all of that as a way to improve or to kind of, like, check myself. Right. I'm, I'm always looking to get humbled. You know what I'm saying? I don't ever want to be like, yeah, I'm the greatest ever. People mm-hmm. are like, oh, you're so good. I'm like, it's okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I, don't, right. I don't ever want to be bigger than... I don't ever want to be bigger in my head than I actually am. Right. I try to keep it yeah, okay keep and try it, to be yeah. better. Humble. 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 <laughs> Shout out to Trey Mack. Shout out to Trey Mack, man. So with, like, with the writing process, I guess, like in English, you have to like proofread or like you get someone to proofread your writing to like make sure it's like right, like before you like submit it. Mm-hmm. Is it the same way with like jokes? Do you like share your jokes with somebody and like, or like a Test bit of it, it to see like how it like, Delivers, yeah. I when I when I first started, I would try to work jokes in the conversation to see how regular people would laugh at it, mm. or without I, telling them, without yeah, without telling me like, hey man, what you think about this joke, and then tell it, because I get on stage and it's more of a conversation. It's not just knock knock who's there. It's mm-hmm. more of a conversation. So I make everybody feel like we just talking. Mm-hmm. So you can't do that if you're like, all right, y'all, I'm finna tell this joke. What y'all think about this? It may not work that way. It's all about how you set it up, perception, and all of that. Um, but now when I do jokes, it's, I don't even write full sentences. I write ideas down and I kind of know what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't plan jokes out too much unless it's something that I need to know exactly what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But I don't really, 
I don't really test the jokes out no more. I test them on the stage because that's okay. my best my best reaction. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm I'm kind of the same way. Uh, you work them in conversations, and like you definitely don't be like, "Hey, I got this new joke I'm working on. Want to hear it?" Like, right? Because like he said, it is when I'm on stage, it is more like a conversation. Uh, we, I'm telling you about what telling you about my day. This is what happened. Let me tell you about this one time, and. We can be, be having a conversation. I can be talking about coffee and how basic my, my coffee is. And, yeah. <laughs> you know. I hope someone picks up on this. So, like, why does he keep talking about that? Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> and I can be talking about how basic my coffee is. And then I start talking about something on stage about that. You know, it, it just all depends. You know, you just you work around it. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody was interested in going into like stand up like what advice would you give to don't them? do it I not just playing oh. <laughs> not just playing uh me personally go for it man like yolo <laughs> uh but even if you don't succeed in it in the beginning like if if you really are passionate about it like if you if this is what you think you want to do like you or if you just need a creative outlet however you know whatever mm-hmm. go for it I know plenty of people that are not funny. I know plenty of people that are not funny, but they're getting booked because they have a hustle, they have a grind, and they're passionate about it. Uh, I mean, but understand, people people are rude. Like, people are rude. When you get on stage, they will, God forbid it's your first time and somebody just tells you you suck. Like, and I've seen it, yeah. so you got to keep pushing toward it. Uh, be humble. Mm-hmm. Be 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 coachable. You definitely have to be coachable because yeah. there are going to be guys that might see the potential in you. Uh, and I use guys loosely. Uh, somebody will see some potential in you, and if you think you're the bee's knees already because you didn't got a couple of laughs, you didn't got a couple of here, and they tell you, hey. Um, try doing this, yada yada. They're only doing it for the most part to help you mm-hmm. because they see something in you. Right. So you you definitely got to be coachable, able to. I as much as long as I've been doing it, I hate hearing the bad things about my comedy simply because I just hate hearing bad things about my comedy. I could have like got up on stage and killed it, and my mentor mm-hmm. would be like, "Hey, you did, you missed this, you did this, you could have did this better." And that's because I asked him. Right. You know what I'm saying like you got to be able to take the good with the bad. Uh, with the bad, with the good, uh, be coachable, man. Be humble. Be on time. Godly, be on time. Hey, Amen. Be on time. Uh, Are a lot of people late? Yes. Man. Mm-hmm. If the show starts at seven o'clock, I try to be there. If the show's supposed to start at seven o'clock, I try to be there an hour, an hour and a half. It all depends, you know if. On my day. But I definitely try to be there early because it's not going to start at 7. Some shows do. Shreveport, we have a thing where if the show starts at 8 o'clock, we think the show starts at 8.30. So we're not going to get there till almost 9 because <laughs> we got to be fashionably late. Yeah. Or, you know, it ain't going to start on time anyway. Like... Oh my gosh! Yeah, I know, right? Like we have this thing where if it says eight o'clock, it really means eight thirty. Mm-hmm. That's what the time I need to get there because they ain't gonna start the show till I get like, there. I think 45. like that. I'm so straight for. I think problem. like that. You the problem? You the problem? Change. You <laughs> people will be like people will buy tickets for an event, and in the event it says the doors open at eight. If you're not in your spot or you're not. At your reserved spot by eight thirty, your table goes away. That's not true. People, though. people will see that information or skip over it or don't read yeah. it, and then get there at eight forty five and be mad they table not there. And then when we show them where it says, "Hey, you supposed to stay in the this, stay in the that," man, it don't even matter. Y'all, I'd be like, hey, "Bro, you didn't read." It was fine print, right? It might not even be fine print because on my tickets, I'd be like, "No refunds." If right. nobody shows up to claim their ticket, you don't get that back. Right. And yeah. they be like, don't nobody be reading that? And that's the problem. Nobody reads anymore. Nobody. That's your fault. Because <laughs> I, I, I made it there. That's why. Never mind. Anyway. Nobody reads anymore. Nobody reads anymore. That's why we have the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's, People listen. 
Yeah, yeah. people are quick to be like, "Hey Siri," and ask a question. Yeah, uh, look at Siri up. don't even listen. So. Siri don't she even She never listen. listens. No. I'd be like, call Charles, and they'd be like, calling Amy. And I'd be like, <laughs> I didn't even say Amy. I don't even got an Amy in my phone. Or Alexa. Or Alexa. But don't even get me started on her. Mm-mm. She get on my nerves, too. Mark, <laughs> mm-hmm. what is some advice you would give someone that's wanting to get into stand-up or comedy? I always tell people, uh, try it. But at the same time, um, if you really want to do it, Nobody's negativity or telling you don't do it is gonna make you stop. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. as a story, I forgot who told it, but um somebody was talking about when they met Jerry Seinfeld for the first time and they did it and they thought they did okay and they asked him, well, What do you think? He's like, I don't, you should never do it again. But and then he stopped and then he talked to him later and he was like, I only told you that to see if you would come back. Mm-hmm. To see if you how real how much you really wanted it. Mm-hmm. it. A lot of people talk a good game and say they want something, but they don't show it and they don't really put in the effort for it. So they won't they don't want it as bad. So I always I'll never discourage somebody from going up there and continuing to go up there because that's how you get better. But people gonna do I what really they want to do. I really want to bring something up, but I don't know how it's gonna translate. Has that happened to you? What somebody told me to Like never someone do it. big telling you like just don't do that. Uh no, I don't think so. Probably never? but I don't I don't remember. Because you just blocked you it. You didn't out. care. I, <laughs> I probably think of it on my way. I'm like, damn, I should have said that's that. what she was talking about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, no. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about? No, I don't know who you're talking about, but has I, it happened to you? Yeah. So my mentor, his one of his homeboys, used to tell me I was trash every time I came. Up. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's, <fine>. that's toxic. <laughs> he's like, you are so bad. You are so bad. You're so trash. You're so bad. And I'm like, I know I'm not that bad. They were laughing. I can't be. And I'm I'm sitting there fighting, defending myself. I was like, oh no. And then one time I came off stage and he was like, boy, you killed it. And I was like, yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, I got his approval. Mm-hmm. Not that it mattered, but then he comes back to me. He was like, nah, he, he always thought you was good. He was giving you a hard time because he saw it in you. Can you can get better. Because right. like every time I was like, because I had started going not to make them laugh. I was trying to make, make him, him laugh. laugh. Yeah. Right. Because he was so close to my mentor and my mentor looked at him for like, if so I'm yeah. like, he got to know something. Like right. he got to see whatever, whatever it is that's got him calling me trash. I need to get rid of that. <laughs> right. But he was just doing it. I had thing. someone tell me like last week, um, if I'm constantly telling you like the good things about yourself, you'll never improve. And I feel like it, that's like that's yeah. how it translates. Yeah. Like if you're constantly hearing like you're so good, like especially to the people that you look yeah. up to, yeah. it's like oh I don't need to improve. I'm good. Like where I'm at, because a lot of people don't have like just that self discipline to say like no I want to work on this. If you're constantly hearing you're great, self awareness. Yeah. can't. Somebody hear lying it. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody lying somewhere. Like not every time. Like because even even when. Me and Mark worked together, and I come out stage more like, boy, you kidding? I just be like, man, no, nah, it wasn't. It really wasn't all that. But like, you know, you see it when you're on stage. What you hear versus what other people hear is different. Because mm-hmm. right? mm-hmm. I've been on stage, and I know I am killing them with these jokes. I this is so funny. And then depending on where the lights are, you might can't see anybody. So you might not be able to hear them laughing, but they're laughing. Mm-hmm. And you get off stage, you're like, that was horrible. Then somebody like, boy, you was out there killing them. Mm-hmm. And you were like, I didn't hear that. I didn't see that. Right. So you it's you got to find that balance. Like <sighs> It sounds like it's two different worlds. It is. Like, you know, sometimes when you're on stage, you know when you're killing it. Yeah. Like people are laughing, they, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Then sometimes you you don't know. Because the light is extremely bright, mm-hmm. you can only hear a couple of laughs. Your mic is too loud. Your the mic is too loud. It's it's a whole bunch of reasons why you don't think you kill it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only one reason why you do is because you see it. Like yeah, mm-hmm. and even you killing it, somebody else might be like, "This was trash." Right. Because I sat in the Mike Epps comedy show, and. Not no again, nothing against Mike. This is funny like, story. <laughs> That's what I was trying to get you to tell. Oh, I forgot. It. That's See? what I was trying to get you oh, to tell. Well, ask me the question again. I don't remember it. All right. Has anybody ever told you uh, you need to stop? Like doing a main, this? like somebody right. that we all know. Well, um, a long time ago, you know Kevin Hart and Mike Epps, they have a beef, an on again, off again beef. Okay. Mike Epps always says that Kevin Hart is not funny. 
Kevin Hart always said, I don't know why we beefing. We two different people. He, he mm-hmm. takes the positive route. So there's one time, y'all remember the Shiggy Challenge? The mm-hmm. Kiki, do you look? Mm-hmm. Everybody was dancing to it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, a, it's a brand called Comedy Hype, and they report on all comedy news. Mike Epps did a collab with them where he did that challenge. And in the skit, he wrote on a unicycle. And I was like, this is horrible. This is not funny. So I thought it'd be funny if I made a comment. So I wrote in the comments, I said, imagine saying Kevin Hart not funny, then getting on a unicycle. Everybody in the comments was laughing. Mm-hmm. He found the comment, DM'd me, and said, you'll never make it. I was like, shit, you made it. Yeah. And that pissed That was off. your response? Yeah, that was my response. I was like, shit, you made it. <laughs> <laughs> I have it framed in my house. So. Are you serious? Yes. That's I, so motivation. I, had, I hadn't had sure. anything like that, but uh, that was a comedy show with uh, the guys from 85 South. Uh-huh. Really? Uh, yeah. You went to it? No. <laughs> uh-huh. You don't uh, like him? No, I I love the 85 South show. Oh, okay, show. okay. So uh, I think they had just promoted the show. It was like a couple years ago. Uh, they promoted the show, and I was like, hey, let me open up for y'all. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And he was like, uh, why would I let uh, another comedian on to a show full yeah. of comedians? Because I'm thinking to myself, Cause I'm from the city, like right. They already, they already like rock with you. Oh, when they came to Shreveport, yeah. Okay, so I'm like, cause you don't think they gonna rock with me? Cause I'm, cause I was feeling myself at this. I was yeah. like, I'm school. Like you can't say school me. Which one? Wait, can I ask which one? Uh, yeah, Carlos. Oh, and, okay. That's but, not that's not unbelievable. That yeah, sounds like Carlos, right? Yeah, that's not unbelievable, right? I I like Carlos, so yeah. You know, when he said that back to me, I was just glad he said something to me. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. And then, you know, I name dropped when I wasn't supposed to. Mm-hmm. I didn't, because I didn't know anything about name dropping. I, like, I know the guy, so that's why I said his name. Yeah. And then I said, don't worry, one day we'll be laughing about this behind some drinks because, yeah. you know, I have to believe in myself in order to make it there. I, if Carlos told me, hey, don't even do comedy no more, you think I'm going to listen? Yeah. Not because, I, not because I think he thinks I'm bad, but, you know. Right. Like, why would I listen to him? And I know I'm being successful. Yeah. So, uh, somebody like me, there's a niche for everybody because there's some people that don't like the 85 South Show. Mm-hmm. That's that's their choice. You know, I like my brand of comedy, which is that, and it falls into that genre. Uh, I don't know. But ain't nobody ever told me, don't do it. Not nobody famous. Not like that. Right. I, that's- you probably just blackballed yourself. That's fine. I, there's the internet. We can edit I, this I, I, out if that's a problem. It's not a problem. It is I'll, on my Instagram. I'll right. bring you on, bro. Appreciate you that. Already, you already yeah. know. Bro, I'm not I'm not worried about these people in the industry. I know. Okay. Yeah, this I know. was but you need to. different. <laughs> you need to. But, you, but you need to. This was probably I can't say that. This was fun though. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that what, what I was, was about to say. Oh, you was about to say this has been like the best interview ever. We'll but see. I, I, can I, you tell us a joke? This is the best podcast y'all ever had. And this Mark didn't. Pod- Mark didn't. No, I'm not Mark didn't do the voice. Can you please? Mark uh, didn't do no. like any of the. Like I asked him earlier, he was. I'll do it. He didn't do it. Yes, he did. No, he did. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. You looking out for me? Yes, he, he. He definitely did. I'm sitting right here. He answered the question in an Eddie Murphy voice. I didn't. You have to do something we all know. I don't know what y'all know. Okay. Well, you ever seen mind. the professor before? Another professor. See. Michael, have you? Have you ever seen the Nutty Professor? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no. He said, yeah, I'm not basic. Hold on, have you not seen the Nutty Did you ask him that? No, I have. Michaela oh. hasn't. That's why I asked Have Michael. you seen all of them? I don't know. It's three of them. Pro- maybe. I'd say I saw at least two of them. Mm. I'm not a big movie person. I'm lying. I'm just... Yeah, you just I'm just okay. Michaela, have you seen all three of them? Mm-mm. You Michaela, you know who Jay-Z is? <laughs> yes. You want me to do the Jay Z voice? Do, yeah, do hoes. Feel like such a prostitute right now. <laughs> that's how, that's what they do. That's why I don't do it. Jeez. This is how we're gonna wrap up the show today. Okay. You want to wrap up the show? Can you do it? All right. What you want me to say to wrap up the show? Thank you guys so much for coming to the Young Creators Podcast. Tune in next week. The greatest podcast? No. Young Thank creators. you for the Young Creators oh, Podcast. That's, that's the podcast you're on right now. Oh, for real? I thought it was called something else. Mark. I thought it was called the Basic Show. I don't know. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, damn, on the spot. It's your boy, Hove. Uh-huh. The Rock is in the building. Yep. Um, You're now tuned in to the greatest podcast, the Young Creators Podcast, right now. Uh-huh. I'm never doing this voice again. This is the last time. I'm going to call Beyonce. I'm going to shut all of this down. 
All right. Hobie's home. <laughs> Chia. Thank you so much. Hey, thank <laughs> thank you so y'all. <laughs> thank I y'all for. You did impressions. I, I, that's why I don't do them because then they're going to be like, do the voice. I don't want to do the voice. <laughs> thank you. No thank problem. you. Thank y'all for joining us. Oh, Thank and where, for where can people oh, find y'all? Yeah, plug, plug all your stuff. Where can people find y'all? Uh, you can find me on all social media at the Wild Man School. That's T H E, excuse me, T H E W I L D M A N S C O O B. And uh, you can cop my new merchandise, you know what I'm saying? The WMS, the Wild Man Scoop. It's uh, paying homage to one of the greatest uh, wrestling factions in the world, uh, the NWO. Say that. I like your Barnes and Noble voice. Appreciate that, man. You should read books. <laughs> I do. Not, I meant like audio, audio books. Oh, I should do an yeah, audio book? Yeah. Oh, okay. You should I, record an audio book. I should do my own, huh? Hell yeah. Life and Trials of the Wild Man School. That's going to be a nasty a book. Bestseller. Can't wait to read it. <laughs> Nobel um, Prize winner, most definitely. Definitely won't be a Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> might. Uh, you can find me on just about anything. Uh, Mark Pugh Jr. M A R K P U G H J R. That's Instagram. Uh, Why did you look confused when you said that? Because I was trying to make sure there was anything else that you yeah. could spell your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. know, because I'm basic. Yeah, you know she is so rude. It's rude as hell. <laughs> I'm never coming back. <laughs> never coming back again. We also have a podcast. Me and Scooby is called the Chest and Chain Podcast. Chain He's the host. Podcast. I'm the co-host. Um, what else do I need to plug? TikTok, Facebook. I am not on TikTok. I'm a grown man. Um, whoa, wait! I'm a grown whoa, man. Whoa, whoa, on TikTok. You right. on TikTok? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm a I'm a different type of grown man. As a grown man as well. <laughs> it's not on TikTok. Uh, yeah, it is about it. Facebook. Facebook, don't, don't just go to my Instagram. You don't have to find okay. me. Please don't add me on Facebook. Do y'all have websites? Uh, no, I'm yes, working. I'm actually working on mine. Uh, mine is down. It'll right be now. up. Mm, I say March. We got you. Yeah, I I'll call you and let you know. I'm not calling you, Michaela. Cause okay, I'm the website designer. <laughs> That's why I ain't calling yeah. you because you rude. <laughs> That's why I ain't going. All right. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on the Young Creators so Podcast. We had a lot of fun today. And we'll see you next week. Bye. All right, y'all. Uh...